Morning, men. We begin in our book, Disciplines of a Godly Man by R. Kent Hughes. And as you know, we're in chapter 8, Discipline of Prayer. So far, we have talked about inspirited prayer. We've talked about a couple of different kinds of prayer. One is continual prayer, and one is varied prayer, and one is persistent prayer. Today, we continue on with the idea of intercessory prayer. So let's begin. The fifth aspect of asking prayer is intercessory prayer for all of the saints. There are many worthy petitions to make, but saints, or believers in Jesus Christ, are to have a large place in our prayers. Notice that this is the call to pray for all the saints, occasions Paul's requests for prayers for himself. Quote, pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. That's Ephesians 6, 19 and 20. Paul knew what others' prayers could do for him. Petitionary prayers for others brings grace to their lives. Few people know that the stupendous achievement of William Carey in India was fueled by his bedridden sister who prayed for him over 50 years. Tennyson beautifully gave verse to Paul's wisdom, saying, quote, If thou shouldst never see my face again, pray for my soul. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Wherefore, let thy voice rise like a fountain for me night and day. For what are men better than sheep or goats that nourish a blind life within the brain? If knowing God, they lift not hands of prayer, both for themselves and those who call them friend. For so the world, for so the whole round earth is every way bound by gold chains about the feet of God, end quote. How beautiful is the fivefold anatomy of petitionary prayer. Inspirited prayer in the spirit or continual prayer on all occasions, varied all kinds of prayers and requests, persistent, be alert and always keep on praying and intercessory for all the saints. Certainly we are challenged and motivated, but the question is, how are we to pray in this way? Here we must turn to very practical advice. So this is the practice of petitionary prayer. Number one, the prayer list. Essential to our effective petitionary prayer is a prayer list. I say this because of my own repeated experiences. For example, I may be praying for my mother, and I, and as I pray for her, I see our old family home at 747 Edmure Avenue. In front is parked my gray painted or primer 1941 Ford. It has racing slicks on the back, a hopped up 48 Merc engine, and on the side, custom pinstriping, which reads, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Suddenly, I'm 17, wearing my blue suede leather jacket, sitting behind my gold steering wheel, and heading down Beach Boulevard to Huntington Beach. I can smell the ocean and cocoa butter. So much for my prayers for my mother. This is why I need a prayer list. To be sure, even using the list, my mind still wanders. But when it does, I always have my list to bring me back. And when I am especially prone to distraction, I can place my index finger on her name and pray with my eyes wide open, moving from name to name in this way. Every Christian man should have a prayer list, which lists, among other things, the names of his family and, if married, spouse and children. Moreover, the list ought to be detailed, featuring personal items under the names of those closest to him. I have found that small post-its placed under headings helps keep my list updated. My daily prayer list carries the following headings, each with several details under it. Family, staff, secretaries and custodians, ill, grieving, important events, present problems, ministries, weekly worship, new believers, missions list. In addition to my daily list, I have found other, four other lists which I try to go through once a week. List 1 has ongoing ill, personal requests from others, evangelism, and spiritual warfare. List 2 has world, USA, personal life, needed personal qualities. List number 3, Christian leaders, pastors, upcoming ministries, and vision. List 4 has government leaders, federal, state, and local. Quite frankly, I could not get on at all without a prayer list, not only because it tames my wandering mind, but also because it ensures that I will not neglect 
things that are important to me, including the many prayer requests for personal prayer, which I receive. Without a prayer list, my promise to pray for you would be totally empty. In addition, a prayer list is perfect for keeping track of answers to prayer. If you do not have a prayer list, start small. Simply list a relationship and matters most important to you on a 3 by 5 card. Add a few specifics under the names and put in your wallet for daily reference. I guarantee you that if you use it, it will greatly enhance your prayer life. Secondly, quiet time. Next, you need some quiet. I am well aware that quiet is a relative term in today's world, where there is virtually no silence. Many of us experience silence during our waking hours. We wake up to a clock radio, shave to the news, drive through noisy traffic, enter a noisy, busy office, return home listening to the rush hour reports, relax in front of the TV, and drift off to sleep as the house pulsates with a thump thump of the family stereo. What is more, the occasional silence we do not encounter can be distracting because it heightens our distracting noises. Trappist monk Thomas Merton tells how, in the deep quietness of a monastery, a cough repeated at predictable in intervals can destroy every possibility of collective thought. Silence is sometimes louder than the noise you are trying to ignore, so you need to choose the situation that works best for you. It may be dominated by road noise, but if that is the atmosphere you need to concentrate, use it. Thirdly, place. Along with this, you must find a place where you will not be disturbed. Early in my ministry, my office was in, my, in a 25-foot trailer. My part-time secretary was on the other side of a thin plywood partition. I could hear everything. If that was not enough, the whole trailer shook when the door opened. My solutions were many and all off the premises. The beautiful, old, and always open and empty sanctuary of a neighboring church, the park, the wonderful anonymity of my car parked at a busy shopping center, even today, though I now have a quiet office, I often go to similar places for my devotions. Fourthly, time. I also try to give my best time to prayer, which for me is never time just before going to bed. One's last waking moments should never be given to powerful intercessory prayer, except perhaps for students who have a final exam in the morning. Here, Jesus' habit is instructive. Quote, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Mark 1.35 The early bird gets the prime time. The real question for you is, when is your best time? For some, it may be lunch or before dinner. Number five, posture. A certain man could not find the right posture for prayer. He tried praying on his knees, but that was not comfortable. Besides, it wrinkled his slacks. He tried praying standing, but soon his legs got tired. He tried praying seated, but that did not seem reverent. Then one day he was walking through a field. He fell headfirst into an open well, and did he ever pray? Seriously, one's prayer posture can make a difference. While the scripture mentions numerous postures for prayer, None is prescribed. What is important is that your posture enhance your reverent intention. Sometimes I kneel. Sometimes I walk about the room. Often I sit at my desk with list in hand. There are times when I lift up my hands and other times I have been on my face. Heart attitude is the key factor. Six, preparation. As to preparation for prayer, honest practicality is of greatest importance. Sometimes a man needs a shower and a shave. If you're into a coffee like I am, a good cup of coffee is a divine cordial. Again, it is not the physical details that are of prime importance, but the condition and stance of the heart. Whatever helps you focus on the Lord, use it. And seven, length. Often the breast prayers are short and passionate. Luther himself said, quote, Look to it that you do not try to do all of it. Do not try to do too much, lest your spirit grow weary. Besides, a good prayer mustn't be too long. Do not draw it out. Prayer ought to be a prayer ought to be frequent and fervent, end quote. A legalistic commitment to duration can kill one's prayer life. All right, so let's go to some food for thought. Food for thought. What does Paul ask prayer for in Ephesians 6, 19 and 20? What does Paul ask prayer for in Ephesians 6, 19 and 20? Do you want other Christians to pray for you in this area? Why or why not? 
What does action on your part have to do with prayer along these lines? Second question, do you find it difficult to find enough time and quiet place away from interruptions for your prayer times? Why? Is it because your life is too busy or are there conflicting loyalties you prefer to ignore? What can you do practically to pray more frequently and to be better prepared for prayer times when they come? All right, guys, uh, tomorrow we're going to finish the chapter and I'll put all these discussion questions at the bottom of the description as, as well. Uh, but I hope this really challenged you and as far as your prayer life goes to make time for prayer and to develop a list and so on. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless you.